let us now discuss the need for loops a loop is used to repeat certain set of statements for the desired number of time let's say we are going to print a b c so if we execute this program it will print a b c once suppose you want to print it twice so you will print one more time so it will print a b c twice what if you want to print a b c n number of times so let's say n is 1000 then you have to type like this 1000 times which is very troublesome or you do not know n that is n is not hard coded we are not saying n is 200 or n is 300 for you to know before executing the program during runtime if you want to give n let's say i may give n as 5 or whatever it is then how can we proceed because after executing the program it will only print the hard coded number of times so here it is printing once i cannot give input when executing the program and print abc that many times so this code has two issues one is even if i want to print thousand times i cannot type abc thousand times that will be time consuming another thing is i cannot print abc for the number of times given as the input when executing the program so that is where loop comes into picture so let's say we have a variable called n and we are going to accept the value of n so now we need to repeat this print abc n times so that is controlled using a loop so the simple loop will be while loop okay so let's say we have another one value called counter equal to one so we are saying while counter less than or equal to n so we will have the body for the loop that is indicated by the curly braces okay so within that we are giving print of abc so let us execute the program so now we are giving the value of n as 5 so we expect the program to print abc 5 times but it is not going to be the case it is going to print infinite number of times you can see it is keeping on printing why because counter will be 1 and you have given the value for n as 5 so 1 less than or equal to 5 will always be true so it will keep on printing abc so this is called infinite loop which means this loop is not going to end so if it has to end the counter value must increase after printing abc once so we will say counter plus plus so now what will happen initially counter will be 1 1 less than or equal to n here n is 5 it will come print abc once then counter will become 2 now 2 less than or equal to 5 yes it will print abc then counter will become 3 so like this when counter becomes 6 this loop will not get executed that is the statements in the body of the loop will not get executed so at that time it will come here and then the program will end so let us execute the program we are giving input as 5 so it is printing abc 5 times now let us use loop and print multiplication table so we will accept n as the input so let's say n is equal to 5 we will print the first 10 rows in the multiplication table so 1 5 is 5 and 2 5s are 10 3 5s are 15 and 4 5s are 20 and so on so finally we will have 10 5s or 50 so here whatever is varying that we must have as the loop variable the variables which control the execution of the loop that is which decide when the loop must end they are called loop variables so here 5 is constant if you see we can divide this into three parts so this is part 1 
part 2 and part 3 so part 3 is a result of part 1 multiplied with part 2 and here it is fixed so n is fixed so it need not be loop variable but this is varying 1 to 10 so the loop variable must be 1 to 10 so we will say something like counter we will use that as the loop variable and it must go from 1 to 10. So, based on the loop variable counter and n, we can obtain the part 3 values, that is these values, by multiplying them. So, if we observe the output or the processing which we have to do, we can find the loop variable. Sometimes, there can be multiple variables that act as the loop variable. But in this scenario, there is only one variable, which is this part 1, which goes from 1 to 10. So, now let us execute the program. So, first we are going to accept the value of n. So, we will use scanf. So, we have accepted the value of n. Now, we need to have a loop. So, earlier, for printing ABC, we were using while loop. Now, we will use for loop. So, for loop has three compartments. So, this is the first compartment, this is the second and this is the third. So, the three compartments, two semicolons are separating them. Then, this is the body of the for loop. So, this first compartment will contain the initialization. So, int, let us say we are going to say counter equal to 1. The second compartment will contain the check, that is the condition, if it is true, then the body of the while loop will be executed. So, we were talking about printing till 10 rows, right? So, counter less than or equal to 10. So, this is the condition to be checked. So, then we will print the table, that is multiplication table. So, what is the format of the multiplication table? It will be 1 star 5. The here 5 is n. So, let us say we are going to give n value. So, 1 star 5 equal to the multiplied value. So, here we have to give the format specifiers. So, the multiplied value is an integer. So, we give a percentage d. And n is also a variable. So, we give percentage d. And counter is also a variable. So, we give percentage d. So, what is the first percentage d? It is the counter because 1 star 5 is equal to 5, 2 star 5 is equal to 10. So, here the first percentage d stands for counter. So, we will give counter. What is the second percentage d? It is n. What is the third percentage d? It is the value that is obtained by multiplying counter and n. So, CTR star n we are giving. So, this will print everything in the same line. We need a new line after that. So, we are giving slash n. So, now let us execute the program. We are giving 5 as the input. It is printing 1 star 5 is equal to 5 continuously. Okay, it is not exiting. Why? Because we have not filled the third compartment. The same reason, the counter never gets increased. So, always it is printing 1 star 5 is equal to 5. So, we have two options. We can fill the third compartment here. So, in this case, when we are giving 5, it will print till 10 star 5 is equal to 50. Or, without having the third compartment, you can increase the value of counter in the body of the loop also. So, this will also print till 10 star 5 is equal to 0. But generally, it is a good practice. Okay not to leave this empty and have counter plus plus. So, now when we are giving 6, it will print till 10 star 6 is equal to 60. Now, suppose we want to make this also as variable. That is, instead of 10 rows, we may want to print 15 rows or 20 rows or 30 rows. Then how will you do that? Simple. We will have one more variable called rows and we will accept that also as the input. So, we have accepted both n and how many rows are to be printed. 
So here, what is the modification we have to do? Simple. Here, 10 is hard coded. Just replace that with the rows. So now when we execute the program, we say 5 and 10 rows are to be printed. It will print 10 rows. Suppose we execute 5 and we say 15 rows are to be printed. It will print till 15, 5 is equal to 75. So if we change the value 10 and 20 rows are to be printed, it will print till 20 star 10 is equal to 200. So now you have understood why loops are required because we cannot write code for which certain variable values will not be known. And also when you have to repeat the process a very large number of times, you cannot copy paste the code that many times. So for these two reasons, loops are very much helpful to repeat a set of instructions for the number of times we desire. So please practice this program and thanks for watching.